Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight, and it's Monday, April 13th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, the Bundy Ranch, one year later. Then, troops train to take on sovereign citizens. And it's official. Hillary announces her presidential run. You say that Hillary Clinton is a witch and that she's not going to be good for the United States. As a white male who basically owns the entire world, you should be depopulated. Well, it's, it's ridiculous. Hillary's going to win. Oh, Hillary. Listen, you're a god, Smitty. Well, HRC kicked off her campaign this weekend. I guess that's uh, her royal Clinton. And she kicked it off with a doozy of a typo. According to Bloomberg Politics, they say her first typo of the 2016 campaign is a doozy. And this is what she said. She said she's fought children and their families all her career. Well, I couldn't agree more. Was that a typo? Was it maybe a Freudian slip? Uh, maybe it was the campaign letter that was meant for her globalist cronies. Nevertheless, it's true. Just take a look at one of the things she's famous for. It takes a village. No, it doesn't take a community. It doesn't take a government to raise children. It takes a family. And of course, Hillary Clinton and her husband's policies have been unfriendly to the family even before the children are born, pushing abortion and then taking away our choices as far as how they're going to be educated, whether or not they're going to be vaccinated. I'm sure you'll find her on the anti-choice side of that issue. But as they point out, it went viral before they fixed it on the Drudge Report. Uh, he pointed that out to everyone. Now, I think maybe her slogan that says, is, are you ready for Hillary? Maybe that should be, are you ready for hypocrisy? And the story from uh, Infowars.com today, Paul Joseph Watson points out, Hillary vows to protect Americans from the 1% while being funded by the 1%. That's hypocrisy for you. He says, out of the top 20 contributors to Hillary in 2008, Six were banks, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, and crucially, Lehman Brothers and Goldman Sachs, two of the institutions directly implicated in the 2008 financial crash, which left millions of Americans financially destitute. And let me just stop here for a second and remind everybody that the too big to fail banks got that way because of Bill Clinton's administration. They were the ones who approved the landmark merger between Bank of America and Nations Bank the largest merger ever seen. Nobody thought that would go through, but when it did, it was off to the races. And very quickly, all the banks began to consolidate in order to survive. That was one of the things that drove this bubble that burst in 2008. Paul goes on to say, making up the rest of the top 20 were law firms as well as monolithic corporations like Time Warner, Microsoft, and GE. Almost all these entities will again contribute to Hillary for her 2016 campaign because as we've said before, an election is an advanced auction of stolen goods. If you want to see the entire list of the people who are in that auction right now, that's in that article from Paul Joseph Watson. And of course, it's no better on the side of Jeb Bush. He spent this last weekend going before the NRA and touting his six pack of freedom. Well, before you can swallow that six pack of freedom, I think you need to down an entire six pack. No. It's absolute hypocrisy on his side as well. Listen to what he's trumpeting here before the NRA. He says, number one, he passed a law while he was governor of Florida to make it easier for hunters and fishermen to register to vote. How does that affect our freedom in the Second Amendment? Then he goes on, number two, a law establishing a baseline number of acres of public hunting land. Do you start to get the idea that Jeb Bush thinks the Second Amendment is about sporting? It's not about sporting. But even worse, he continues on, he says, a law prohibiting the confiscation of firearms following hurricanes. How about a law prohibiting the confiscation of firearms, period? Oh, that's right, we already have it. It's called the Second Amendment. Then he goes, number four, a law to restrict non-law enforcement access to records on concealed carry licenses. Well, one of the reasons that law enforcement is keeping that information is because they have turned our rights into privileges, Getting, having us get a permit to carry guns. He goes on with number five and six are essentially the same thing. A law ensuring Florida citizens had the right to carry firearms for self-defense and other lawful purposes while in the national forests and state parks in Florida. <laughs> Why would you limit it to that? That's, no, that's not in the Constitution. 
That's not part of our God-given rights that are recognized by the Constitution. And then finally, in six, he says, a law to assist men and women who are in the military in renewal of their concealed weapons and firearm licenses. Because, you know, Jeb Bush is all about turning a right into a government-granted privilege. So much for his six-pack of freedom. You want to know what real freedom looks like? Real freedom is not given. Real freedom is always taken. And one year ago, the community around the Bundy Ranch took that freedom. They stood up in a determined way to the people who were there unlawfully, in violation of posse comitatus, an army of federal bureaucrats had descended upon the area, not working through law enforcement, and brutalizing the people of that area. They stood up for each other, and they stood down the federal government. We're going to play you a clip of that in just a moment. But first, I want to take a look at how the press is predictably spinning this still a year later. A couple of progressive uh, outlets here. We have Climate Progress. Says one year later, Clive and Bundy and his right-wing militia are still trying to seize public lands. No, it was never about them seizing public lands. It was always about his grazing rights. And if you want to talk about who are good stewards of public land, maybe you ought to take a look at what John McCain is doing in Arizona, climate progress. There he is taking lands that were turned over by treaty to the public, to the Indians, a sacred area, a historical area, an area for the public to use. He's turning that over to be completely devastated for the benefit of a foreign corporation, pretty much along the lines of the Agenda 21 crony capitalism that Harry Reid was involved in all up and down Nevada. And of course, that was what Clive and Bundy, the last rancher standing, they had to get him out of the way so they could get mitigation for where they wanted to put their other projects. But he had rights, he had property rights, his grazing rights, as well as water rights, as well as people who have even mineral rights. Those are rights that are sold by the government, by the federal government to individuals. That is real property. But of course, they don't want to allow that. They use the excuse of an endangered species, the desert tortoise and the BLM, grabbed those tortoises and then eventually euthanized them, saying they didn't have the money to feed them, yet they had the money for an army to descend upon that area. No, the federal government is not the best steward of the land. It can be done far better, I believe. There's still issues, we still have to have oversight, but the public lands, I think, can be overseen by the public at the local level far better than it can be done at a distant Washington, D.C. bureaucracy. Now, this is the way that Salon spun it. They put a racist spin on this. Guess what? This is they, what, they say this is what a white supremacy looks like, a party at the Bundy Ranch and a funeral in North Charleston. So what they do is they try to tie together this one-year anniversary party that they had at the Bundy Ranch where they served everybody barbecue, welcomed the public. They try to tie that with the shooting in North Charleston, try to say that because it worked there, it was an example of white privilege. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I'm going to point out the differences between the failed demonstrations in Ferguson and what happened here, and it has nothing to do with white privilege. But then they also try to uh, take the extremist Jared Miller and his wife Amanda. They say they traveled to the Bundy Ranch only to be turned out, but they would go on to execute two Nevada police officers in June. They took it upon themselves to be the vanguard of the Bundy Rebellion. So even though they do mention briefly that they were thrown out, they don't give any credit to the people there at the Bundy Ranch standoff to police the outside agitators in their midst, the provocateurs, and throw them out. Instead, they try to tie them, as we saw Harry Reid and others do. And they go on to say, in the end, the two officers were the only casualties. And Bundy's boys went home with not so much as a Band-Aid as federal agents were backed down by a veritable army of militiamen. That, ladies and gentlemen, they say, is white power. No, it is not. It is the power of the community. The community came together. They managed it very well there. There's a lesson to be learned, and it's not one of racism. It's how can we stand up as a community in the power of the community, posse comitatus, to do the right thing, to protect each other, even when law enforcement, who has the responsibility, won't exercise that responsibility, even when the federal government breaks posse comitatus and acts in an unlawful and unconstitutional manner. Here's that full report that we put together. Sheriff, if this is what we the people are asking this morning, this 
disarm the Park Service. We're faced with a decision to either get the cattle or be the cattle. But we're staying here until they're gone. We want those arms picked up, don't we? Yeah! The crowd is now moving forward toward the barrier. The police have been telling everybody they are going to shoot if we don't move back. As we approach the one year anniversary of the standoff at the Bundy Ranch, I want to take another look at what happened, especially in light of the lies and slander from media like Glenn Beck and the dangerous characterization by Obama, Harry Reid, Homeland Security that labeled the community standing together against brutality as domestic terrorists. On April 7, 2014, Paul Joseph Watson wrote an article, Armed Feds Prepare for Showdown with Nevada Cattle Rancher, with the subtitle, Ruby Ridge Style Standoff Brewing, as Bundy says he's prepared to be killed. The property rights dispute had been going on for decades, but now things were beginning to come to a head. Hundreds of federal officials, aided by helicopters, low-flying aircraft, hired cowboys, began rounding up Bundy's cattle the preceding weekend as Bundy accused them of trespassing. And as supporters from the local community and protesters headed to the area to demand that the feds back off, the BLM had created a First Amendment area out in the middle of nowhere where demonstrators could voice their concerns, but nowhere else. This area right here, this small area here, was cordoned off with orange uh, uh, temporary like construction uh, barriers, march with a free speech zone. It just shows you how quickly your free speech zones can disappear when you allow them to be contained to a very small area, it's gone. But uh, we're here and we want to tell the BLM something about uh, how upset we are with what's going on here, but there's no government agency here to listen to us. That's the whole reason you don't confine people to remote areas from what's happening. Not only had the federal agents been confiscating Bundy's cattle, they had also set up agents with sniper rifles, pointed at the ranchers, pointed at the protesters. The crowd had been building throughout the week, and on Saturday there was a huge crowd. To defuse it, the sheriff came in in the morning to address the crowd and tell them that the powers that be had graciously consented to allow the last rancher remaining in business in the area to continue grazing. Never mind that he had had most of his cattle rustled by the army of BLM contractors for the past several weeks. With that being said, I believe a press release has already been put forth that the BLM is going to cease this operation. Uh, the Gold Butte allotment will be reopened to the public. Much to the surprise of the sheriff, Bundy said that wasn't good enough. The sheriff, this, this is what we the people are asking this morning. Dis, disarm the Park Service. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At Lake Mead and Red, what, Red Rock Park and all other parks that the federal government yeah. claims they have jurisdiction over. Yeah. 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 Take your county bulldozers and uh, loaders and tear down the entrance places. The, where they ticket us and where they uh, enter us and make us and citizens pay their that? fees. You take down the, you get the county equipment out there and tear those things down this morning. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 What they wanted was for him to exercise his authority as the only lawful law enforcement in the area and to disarm the BLM agents and contractors who had been pointing their sniper rifles at the protesters and ranchers, confiscate their weapons, tell them to leave the area, and then stack the weapons on stage. Bundy gave him one hour to do so. At the end of the time limit, Bundy announced that it looked like the sheriff wasn't going to do anything. No one was surprised. But what did surprise us and surprise the Federals was his announcement. I guess he's not coming, so I guess uh, we had presents. We thought we, we had a sheriff here, but evidently we don't have a sheriff here. We're wow. going to go and take the rest of them out of the compound trails up here above the freeway. Yeah. I was one of the first ones to get down to the area where the standoff would occur. Okay, people are now moving. They stopped for prayer. 
They had vehicles, they had guns that were pointing at us, and they had shields. And they had a loudspeaker that was announcing that they would shoot if we did not leave the area. The only mainstream media that was in attendance was one cameraman from Fox News. He desperately wanted to get over to the BLM and interview them. But he was scared to death, as you can see in this video, that they were going to shoot him. He kept announcing that he was with Fox News. He pulled up his shirt to show that he wasn't armed. They kept telling him to go back. They did not want him to come to interview them. They were in a fighting stance. They had 80 different cars, each of them with just one BLM agent. Now, to stand off, I've got a count of 107 vehicles. 107, uh, okay. Going on the road. That's right. That's and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the thing of it is, is all 107 of those uh, vehicles were armed with uh, arm, uh, armed army. Yes. That always fascinated me. Absolutely. Why would the, the state highway patrol allow an army like that onto their highway and and then why would a, that army be able to pass through the city of Mesquite without, you know, any resistance, through the state of Arizona without any resistance, through the port of entry into Utah without any resistance? And that army disapp disappeared uh, in the uh, uh, state of Utah, and not one media, not one, no question. These, that army went across the United States without one question asked. An army of BLM agents, 107 cars of armed men. This is exactly what the Posse Comitatus Act prohibits. It's not just a prohibition of the military being used for law enforcement. Understand that Posse Comitatus is Latin for the power of the community. The Posse Comitatus Act prohibits the president from usurping the true posse comitatus, the true power of the community, with his own posse of armed federal agents. There were clear distinctions, too, from Ferguson and other places where we've seen protests about a government that's out of control. In Ferguson, businesses in the community were destroyed and burned. As InfoWars has pointed out, in Ferguson, these looters were coming from outside of the community. They were not the core protesters. And, of course, the same thing could have happened at Bundy Ranch. I believe the reason that it didn't was because the militia threw out people who were dangerous or provocateurs. People like Jared Miller, who later shot two cops in Vegas. But rather than give the militia credit for expelling people like Jared Miller, the media used it to demonize them. Another difference about the Bundy Ranch was that there was a clear, achievable objective. The people were peaceful, but they were determined. The police have been telling everybody they're going to shoot if we don't move back. People are moving forward with their hands in the air, holding flags with both hands in the air. It's a mixture of people on foot, as you can see, people on foot and cowboys. They decide that they're going to pull those pants, but I need, it's only going to be Bundy and his son. No, That's no, it. it's the people or not, and you, you guys need to leave. Okay. To you need to leave. Yeah, that's Anna, that's Anna, the I'm telling you, you need to de-escalate the situation. No, I'm imploring upon you your responsibility. Hey, hey, hey! 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 Listen. Hey, hey, listen. Hey, listen. You, you are on the battle state. Okay. And we need time. time. There's a time the time is now. We're doing that. No, the but time is now. these people back so they can do the same thing. Push them back so they can do the same thing. Cattle are coming in 30 minutes, but we're staying here until they're gone. Okay? You know, That's can, what we're I can, doing. I can back some of these guys up. You promise they won't run me and my hey, partner down. <laughs> whatever you tell us to do, All right. as long as it's not to compromise this mission, we will do. You have okay. authority. All I ask you to do is just, just hang tight. Okay. So we're all right where we're at? Yeah. Okay. This is 1776. No, it's not. That's right. What happened, what we call the Boston Massacre was an angry mob. You can call them a bunch of drunk rowdies. They just, it's just like guys that like barroom brawls. I just love being in a fight. There's guys like that. They're belligerent. They'll fight anybody. We were misrepresented by powerful voices. So these people who hold themselves out to be patriots are not. They're nothing more than domestic terrorists. We rode over there. We didn't come charging, guns a-blazing. We were not armed. There were a couple of cowboys that had rifles in their boots, their saddle boots. There was one or two riders that may have had a sidearm on their, their persons. None of them drew them from their scabbards, from the boots. I know Glenn Beck wasn't there, 
But he can see from the videos taken by the people who were there that nearly all of the people at the standoff were not armed, and those that were had them holstered, even as the bureaucrats, all of whom were armed, pointed weapons and threatened to shoot. People with no guns in their hands, marching in defiance to troops threatening to shoot them. That was in the spirit of Gandhi and Martin Luther King. But let us not forget that it was Gandhi who said among the many misdeeds of British rule in India, history will look upon the act of depriving a whole nation of arms as the blackest. Whether or not you agree with Cliven Bundy's position on his grazing rights, everyone should be appalled at the conduct of the BLM, its agents, and its hired contractors. Free speech containment areas, government snipers pointed at protesters and ranchers for weeks, violent, brutal confrontations with peaceful protesters, all manifestations of a government that is dangerously out of control. The Bundy standoff wasn't just a news event. What we saw with the showdown was that there are still Americans that won't be treated like slaves. There are still Americans that will stand with their neighbors against an army of federal bureaucrats and contractors that threaten and brutalize them. What we covered in the rural West was a government out of control and acting provocatively, as we would see again in just a couple of months in Ferguson. Unlike Ferguson, the crowd would not turn into a mob attacking its neighbors, burning their businesses. The community stood together with each other resolutely and in a determined way made it clear that they were not looking for a fight, but they weren't going to back down either. What the Bundy family and their neighbors demonstrated to the nation was that power truly lies with the community and that when the community stands together, neighbor with neighbor, against a violent and brutal government, the thugs will back down and slink away. Unlike Glenn Beck and Obama, Thomas Jefferson would have approved of what happened at the Bundy Ranch standoff. He wrote in 1787, what country can preserve its liberties if its rulers are not warned from time to time that his people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. President Obama has made a symbolic gesture in support of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender agenda. 
When it was announced, the White House had opened a gender-neutral restroom in the Eisenhower Executive Office building. The White House allows staff and guests to use restrooms consistent with their gender identity, which is in keeping with the administration's existing legal guidance on this issue, White House spokesman Jeff Tiller said. The move is part of a wider effort to support the LGBT agenda. On Wednesday, Obama signed an unconstitutional executive order banning companies that do business with the federal government from discriminating against LGBT staff. Obama has also demanded an end to psychiatric conversion therapies designed to correct the sexual orientation of gay, lesbian, and transgender youth. Obama's executive order arrives as a number of states have moved to prevent transgender people from using restrooms based on their claimed sexuality. Legislation in Florida outlaws the use by transgender of bathrooms, locker rooms, and other sex-segregated facilities, except those designated for their gender at birth. Miami Republican Frank R. Tiles is proposing a one-sentence law titled Single Sex Facilities. The bill could make it a crime to use the restroom that doesn't correspond to your gender at birth. Transgender activists have criticized similar laws introduced in Kentucky, Missouri, and Texas. The activists say the laws are discriminatory and have accused lawmakers of attacking the dignity and humanity of transgender and gender non-conforming people. Imagine if you walked into a room with someone and sat down on a couch and that person tells you that everything you believe about your gender is wrong. And the person that you feel yourself to be, you are incorrect about that. That's essentially what we're doing in conversion therapy and that's why it needs to be ended. Transgender people know who they are. We don't need to be told and coached how to be someone else. We need to be supported in being ourselves. Conversion therapy can be called many things. We used to call things like this brainwashing or reprogramming. It's all about making people conform to the way things are. But if society is going to grow, we need to move beyond the way things are to the way things should be, the way things ought to be. The purpose of why we're here is to improve the lives of the American people and to let people know that they're not alone. We care about our young people and we all have a responsibility to make sure that they grow up healthy and that they thrive and that they can reach their dreams. And that should be available to every young person regardless of who they love, what their sexual orientation is or what their gender identity is. And we want to make sure that the help that they get um, along their way um, is constructive and helpful and guided by love and nurturing and science. On the surface, putting a transgender bathroom near the White House may be the 21st century thing to do. However, President Obama signed an unconstitutional executive order that gives him massive leverage over sections of the economy that won't adhere to an estimated 0.3% of the U.S. population. And under Obama's watch, transgender sex education is being doled out to elementary school children, courtesy of the United Nations. The entire LGBT community makes up approximately 4% of the population of the United States, and President Obama wants to roll up his sleeves and take uncompromising state governments head on. Meanwhile, you can throw a dart in any direction and hit a major global crisis. John Baum for Infowars.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1 888 253 3139. 
InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does Vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but Vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. It's hard to do when you're on TV to find a... <laughs> yeah! Score! Goal! Goal! <laughs> Now, in this segment, we're going to look at evidence that from Florida to California, the American military is training to take on the American public and that the police are playing martial law. Take a look at this video from Florida, for example. This is a cop who pulled over someone who evidently, if you listen to the conversation, had flipped a bird at this officer. I'm really getting pulled over by a tank right now. Yes, sir. You know, the Supreme Court actually ruled that you're legally allowed to flick off police officers. Okay. And between the headlights. I'm getting stand between the yes, headlights yes, where sir. I told you yes, to. Yes, if I have to ask you again, yes, you will be put in handcuffs and arrested yes, for sir. resisting. Extending your arm out the driver's side window I of a vehicle and flicking somebody off is an improper hand signal. There are legitimate hand signals to use. So I'd ask you, what's more offensive? Flipping somebody a bird, exercising your free speech rights, or the cops playing at martial law? And of course, we've had a lot of people sending us information as we asked for you to take pictures of what you're seeing all across the country with these military exercises that are coming in. But there's more to it than that even. We've got the government admitting everywhere that they're working on law enforcement. Look at this article that was on Infowars.com today. And a camera's everywhere culture Science fiction becomes reality. Now, this was an LA Times article, and they're talking about how we all have cameras, so I guess we're not supposed to worry that the government is watching us 24-7 everywhere we go. We have cameras, too. Nevertheless, they start to talk about what the government does, and listen to this admission from the LA Times. Just throw this in as a matter of fact. The U.S. Department of Defense is developing video monitoring technology called Mind's Eye to predict crime before it happens. And they say, yeah, this is kind of like Minority Report. Now stop and think about that. Not only is this pre-crime, but we have the Department of Defense working on a pre-crime scenario. Sounds like NDAA, doesn't it? Detention by the military without being charged by a crime, with a crime for an indefinite period of time. That's something we should all be very worried about. But take a look at this picture that we got from uh, another reporter on the street, a citizen reporter, sent us these trucks. He says this was in Meridian, Mississippi, near the intersection of Interstate 20 and 59. He says, I followed them to where they were headed south on 59. That's heading towards Hattiesburg, which is home to Camp Shelby, which is listed on the original Jade Helm map. Now, look at the picture closely. Do you see these trucks? Look at the 3% logo on this truck. They're training people to look at the Patriot Movement going right down the script provided by the Southern Poverty Law Center. And of course, there was another admission at the dirty bomb drill in California that we were uninvited to. Evidently now, the government is going to set in judgment as to whether or not they like our reporting and not give us access. But of course, citizen journalists showed up anyway. And we got some great clips. We had this clip that showed over the weekend raw footage of the drills where the military is exercising against civilians. Doesn't look like they're trying to help anybody. Doesn't look like they're trying to respond to a dirty drill. No, they're responding to 
a crowd yelling racist. And then later on, we have this bombshell video that we've got from CourageSowers.com. We're going to talk to Keith Johnson now. A bombshell video showing the crowd yelling, I'm a sovereign citizen, I don't have to listen to you. Let's go now to Keith Johnson from CourageSowers.com. Keith Johnson, Courage Sowers, thank you for joining us. Now, tell us why you were there, why that was important for you to go to this drill. Well, I was there because I live in the Sacramento area, and I knew they were having the drill. And what I needed to do was just to make sure that there was someone there to get some kind of coverage, some kind of footage, because I know that they, they were only allowing mainstream media. Yes, absolutely. And you're not going to get the true story there. Yes, and you've got some bombshell footage, and we're going to show that. Uh, mm -hmm. But first, kind of give us an overview of what you saw there at the drill. Well, it was in the Army National Guard compound. It wasn't actually out in the streets. And I was walking around trying to find a way to get some footage. And there's an apartment complex for retired citizens next door. And their door was open to the yard. And I went in there, and I ended up right next to the place. And I saw them doing their uh, hazmat decontamination drills. And then there was the drills with the National Guard doing the riot control. And they were actually about 20, 30 feet away. So we were able to have great footage of that. Yeah, you got very good and footage. Just happened. Yeah. Good. We had some that was uploaded, some raw footage that people sent to us this weekend. And you could mm -hmm. see the crowd control. That was disturbing to see that this was supposedly a terrorist event. But of course, mm -hmm. they were using it as the military controlling American civilians. But you got very close. And we're going to play that in, ju mm -hmm. in just a moment. But tell us what else you saw there. Well, Besides that, there was, I saw a lot of wasted money and time. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people standing around. There was a taco truck out there. They were eating. It just seemed to me it was a waste of time. And then I just happened to be rolling, you know, the footage. And one of the actors just shouted out, I am a sovereign citizen. I refuse to recognize you guys. Yeah, yeah. Let's, I think let's you can play hear my that voice footage. on there. That was interesting. Let's play that footage now, guys. Let's let's roll mm -hmm. that footage. They're training exactly for what? Victims. That was pretty amazing. I know why that disturbs me. Tell the audience why that disturbs you to see that at a terrorist drill. Well, you would think if it was a dirty bomb and there was a terrorist event, they should be training how to help the wounded, how to secure evidence and restore order. Exactly. And I really don't see why when you have young guardsmen putting a I am a sovereign citizen into that whole scenario to me was disturbing. And that's what, that's what we saw was young. the crowd control and essentially portraying Americans, uh, sovereign citizens as mm -hmm. the enemy, as the terrorists, I think. Yes, I agree. I think what they're doing is they're taking young impressionable soldiers and they're kind of equating in their minds subtly 
terrorist attacks with the sovereign citizens, the Patriot movement, if you yeah. will. Yes, and not so subtly. We have other things that have been sent to us by other people showing, for example, the three percenter logo on trucks that are going to be used, presumably in some of these training uh, exercises. That's precisely mm -hmm. what they're doing, Keith. They're training people, training the soldiers to see citizens who stand up for their rights as the enemy, as terrorists. Yes, I agree. Well, that's and that's that's what I saw. Tell us I mean, a little bit about your site before we go. You, it's uh, CourageSowers.com. Uh, what do you normally mm -hmm. cover there? That's actually my wife and I started that site because we've decided time to get off the sidelines and join the fight. We're mm -hmm. focusing on faith, health, food, gardens, and liberty. Great. In those well, three areas. You certainly did a great job of covering this event. Thank you so much for doing that and for so encouraged because I think it is really courageous to go into these areas where you know you're not welcome and uh, take videos that the public should see. The government mm -hmm. should not be operating like this in secret. It should not be determining who gets to go to events and who doesn't. Thank you so much for showing up and filming Absolutely. it anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Keith you. Johnson. And again, we need a thousand Paul Revere's out there, people just like Keith Johnson with CourageSowers.com. If you want to send us your tips, send them to jadehelm at Infowars.com. Well, that's it for our news tonight. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. And if you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, please become a subscriber, paid subscriber there. That helps to support our operation, and it gives you the news every Monday through Friday as it's happening. And it can be shared with up to 20 other people, along with all of Alex Jones's documentaries. Well, join us again tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 you are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.